Hallelujah. He's worthy. He's worthy of all my praise in this house. He's worthy of all my worship in this house. He's worthy of all the honor in this house. If he never does another thing for me, God, you've been so good already. God, you've been so good already. It would take a lifetime, God, to thank you for what you've already done. Hallelujah. I pour out my heart to you, Jesus. Hallelujah. What a wonderful presence of the Lord that's in this house. And we're going to go before the Lord in prayer. And I'm going to mention to you some prayer requests. And I'm going to ask you to pray a little bit different than we already have before. This, this whole church service from the Sunday school to our meeting in that room, everything's been different. So we might as well make our prayer different. Amen? We want to remember a little baby of Hannah Skillman. She is on the road to recovery. She is, yes, praise God. She's had a few small road bumps, but she is on the way to recovery. They are still working with doctors to figure out what the future holds for this baby. But I'm still believing God and asking God that he would give this baby the same miracle that he gave Lexi. That when she leaves Boston, there's not going to be one treatment that's going to be needed. There's not going to be one more doctor's visit that's needed. That God would heal her completely made whole. We want to remember uh, Troy Niles. Uh, this is somebody that Sister Kathy knows is very sick, dealing with an illness. So we want to pray that God, with healing virtue, would flow to where they are. We want to remember Stacy Higgins, uh, the family of Stacy Higgins. I'm sorry, uh, she has passed away. She's been on our prayer list. Uh, she did pass away, so we want to pray for the family this time of loss. Also, a lady by the name of Valerie Cross, her husband has just passed away just recently. I believe it was this week, and I believe that she might need some healing in her body. So we want to pray that God's peace that passes all understanding would be with her, and that God would also heal her. And then also, while we pray, I want some faith-filled apostolics to come to this altar. We're going to uh, pray over this prayer shawl, and it is going to go to Valerie Thompson. Uh, she has cancer. They are not giving her any time really uh, to live is pretty much terminal you're say your goodbyes but we're going to pray and ask god and believe not just ask but believe for a miracle the bible says you ask anything in my name believing that you should have it amen and we're going to believe that god's going to do a miracle in this lady's life and heal her raise her up and give her salvation and when we get done praying for these prayer requests this is what i want to do I want you to pray that the power and the presence of God falls on the person to your right. And I want you to pray that God pours out his spirit on the person to your left. And I want you to pray that God pours out his spirit on the person in front of you. And I want you to pray that God pours out his spirit on the person behind you. I want you to pray that God pours out his spirit in the parking lot. And I want you to pray that God pours out his spirit in every living room that they might watch this later on. And I want us to unite together and believe that the power of God is going to hit this house. And a manifestation of the great I am, the everlasting Father. It's going to sweep in this room. Come on, can we lift our voices and lift our faith into this atmosphere? God, in the name of Jesus, I pray a miracle over Hannah Skillman. God, that you would heal her from the top of her head to the sole of her feet. Every ounce of tumor that's left in this body, I command it to dry up and die in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, you said by your stripes we are healed. Be healed in the name of Jesus. I pray for Troy Niles. Be healed in the name of Jesus Christ. God, I pray your peace that passes all understanding would be the, with the family of Stacey Higgins, uh, with Valerie Cross. Uh, God, let a healing virtue flow into Valerie in the name of Jesus. Uh, God, and I pray over this prayer shawl. If there's so many apostolics that would believe with me and pray over this prayer shawl. God, you're the healer of all my diseases. Uh, you gave unto your disciples, God, the power over every sickness uh, and over all manner of disease. Uh, I rebuke you cancer in the name of Jesus Christ. I command you to dry up and die in the name of Jesus that you would plague this lady no more, that she would receive a healing and you would fill it with your spirit in the name of Jesus Christ. And God, I pray that your spirit would pour out God on every soul in this house. God, on the person to my left, on the person to my right, on the person in front of me, on the person behind me. God, I 
pray your Holy Ghost Spirit would flow from the front to the back, to the left, to the right. Let everybody in the house be full of your spirit and speak with other tongues in the name of Jesus. Let your Holy Ghost power flow into our parking lot. Let every car be filled with a manifestation of your spirit. Let your power, God, go into every living room that's going to watch this video of the preaching. They may not see this part of it, God, but your power would go in that living room, God, and you would heal them, and you would deliver them, and you would raise them up. In the name of Jesus Christ, let every heart in this room receive you the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus. And I wonder if we can just release a resounding praise in this room and believe that God's a healer, that God's a deliverer, that God's my Savior, that He's everything that I need, and so much more. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, give him praise right now. Give him worship right now. I told you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. What an awesome God we serve here today. Hallelujah. That's it. Worship him right now. I love you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, turn to your neighbor and say, be well. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Turn to your neighbor and say, be healed. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, turn to your neighbor and say, be prosperous. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, be successful. Turn to your neighbor and say, be successful. Hallelujah. 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 I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. somebody to speak a blessing over you. If you missed the service this morning, 10 o'clock, you missed it. Sorry to say. Uh, I ministered in that service today, and if I have to say so myself, but you missed it. And hopefully it's going to continue on here through this service and you won't miss this. Look at your neighbor. Take a hold of their hand and just say, be healed. Be healed. Be healed. Hallelujah. This has been kind of getting me going. I was in the church in Norway on, on Sunday, and Brother James told me about a, a miracle that took place for a lady that had diabetes, and she wanted prayer. And all he did was say, pancreas work, and it works. She's healed. Work. 
In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Heart, work. In Jesus' name. No, it's not time to mince words at all. Uh uh. Speak it in the name of Jesus. Mind. Come on now. Come on, some of you are troubled in your mind. Come on, your mind's not working right. Come on now, depression. Come on, that depression's been working on you. Mind work. Hallelujah. 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 You think you can do it today? I think you can. I believe that you can prophesy a healing upon somebody. I believe that you can. The Bible says we will lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Hallelujah didn't say that we had to do a lot of, you know, sort of dancing around the subject or, or something like that. Uh, no, if they need the Holy Ghost, uh, you need to look over to them right now and get their attention and say, receive the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Come on, look at them. Receive the Holy Ghost. Is there any kids in the service today that need the Holy Ghost? Come on. Look at them. Hallelujah. Receive the Holy Ghost. Yes. There's a blessing in this place today. There is. There's a blessing in the house today. Amen. Amen. God's got something for you here in the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, clap your hands and give God praise right now. Hallelujah. Right arm work. Right leg work. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I feel my mind. Jesus, hallelujah, if I understand my scripture right, I'm not the tail, I'm the head, I said, you're not the tail, you're the head, and the head is where the speaking's going on, the head is where your voice is, problem is, uh, you're You've been acting like the tail. I don't go into any detail right there. Use your own imagination. But you've been acting like a tail. And tuck your tail and run on home and not get anything that God truly wants for you to get. But if you'd be the head that God has called you to be, you could pronounce a blessing over your family right now. Oh, my, I'm telling you what, there's something in my spirit right now. I'm just telling you this. Uh, if you'll speak it, uh, God will do it right now. If you'll have enough bravery and you'll have enough faith uh, and you'll have enough confidence in the Word of God, you can speak it uh, into your family right now. Your family has been in chaos. Your family has been in trouble. Your family's been plagued with sickness. I don't know about you, but it, this is the way it's in my house. It, 
I've never been quite driven to this point. But I want to tell you what, there would come a time when there's somebody in my house could become so obnoxious and could become so disrespectful and could become so detrimental to my family that I'd look at them and I'd say this, get out, get out, get out, get out. Some, somebody here today, the devil's been plaguing you long enough. It's time for you to look at him and say, get out, get out. But you don't have to hang it at the wall in your bedroom. That's right. They may fly it in your face on a bumper sticker on the back of their car, but you don't have to have it in your living room. Hallelujah. Let me tell you something. They may say a lot of things, display a lot of things, uh, but you don't need it on your shirt. Uh, no, no, no. No, no. Because you're a child of God. Uh, and you have the authority in the name of Jesus. And mom and dad, let me tell you something. You are called of God to protect those children that God has given to you. And you need to use that authority in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. It might be in every other house, but as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Somebody, you need to hear what I'm saying to you today. Jesus name. time give God praise right now. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. We're going to bring an offering as unto the Lord today. The ushers come, just put the plates up here on the speakers. We're going to keep on praising and worshiping the Lord. I want to welcome everybody to the house of the Lord today. We're glad that you're here. Pray a blessing upon your life. 
Amen. We're so glad to see you. Pray God will do something spectacular in your life today. You're not here by accident. You're here because God has beckoned you. God has called you. God has moved by His Spirit upon your life. You're in the right place at the right time. God wants to do a miracle in your life. Can anybody say amen? Amen. Amen. I will just mention to you, this coming Tuesday is First Tuesday, and it's our prayer and fasting day here at the church. And so keep that in mind. August 5th and 6th of this week, Main Network of Prayer uh, Summit in Augusta. That'll be on Friday and Friday night and on Saturday morning. Also, it's First Sunday this week on the 7th, 11 a.m. service only. We will be kicking off our Sunday, uh, our school supply drive, excuse me, and that will start next week. Also, on August the 12th is our youth night, 6.30 p.m. here at the church. Amen. Amen. I believe God's going to do something very special in this place. We're going to bring an offering as unto the Lord today. I do want you to bring your offering. Or if you've already given, I just want you to kind of march by and just kind of walk by a little bit uh, and say, God, I'm just here to worship you and I'm here to praise you. Let's get out. Uh, let's come. Let's give. Uh, let's just worship. Uh, let's praise and magnify the Lord. Uh, the praise team's coming. We're going to just magnify the Lord. Brother and Sister Mason, it's so good to have you folks with us. Brother Mason's going to be preaching shortly. And we're going to have a great time in the house of the Lord today. Oh. Something great is about to happen. Hallelujah. Bless your people, God. Bless them abundantly. Bless them going in and bless them going out. Bless them in the city. Bless them in the fields. Bless them in their homes. Bless them in the school. Bless them, oh God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus.
somebody tell him he's been good. Hey, you good Lord. Hey, you good Lord. Woo. Come on, lift up a shout of praise. Come on, he's been good. He's been good, he's been good.
not getting in a hurry this morning. I'm sorry. I'll let him sing it again. Doesn't bother me one bit. So happy to be here today with the district superintendent, your pastor, and his wife. Thankful to them for being. Thankful to them for being great parents to my daughter. John says, I didn't spank her enough growing up. I don't know if that's true or not. I guess I could say the same thing about him. Mother's cry is so funny. Can you put Matthew 24 and 37 up behind me? Thank you very much. It's not in the, the stuff I gave sis this morning, but just throw it up there, maybe as far as I go today. And glad that they're they're uh, fantastic grandparents to my boys. John would say, well, it's easy to rectify. Just move up here and take Belfast. I heard that all day yesterday about the Lord speaking to me. I can't go to anywhere in the coast of Maine without somebody saying the Lord speaks to me. It's hard to ignore his voice when you're sitting there watching the sailboats tip over. You had to, you had to be there. Sitting there on the edge of the dock singing sitting on the dock of the bay oh I'm sorry I slipped in I'm glad to have the John Wick twins here this morning if you don't know what that is good for you Matthew 24 and 37 I, I'm going to just take my time if you don't mind I'm not going to take a lot of time because I was I, you kind of owe me from last time okay. I'll just be honest with you I only preached 15 minutes the last time I preached a message here both time, 18 minutes, because Raymond told me how long I preach. So 18 and 15, that's not even a, a normal sermon at camp. So I, I feel like I'm owed some time, <laughs> if that's okay. But I'm going to be speaking, preaching to you, helping you understand that the rapture is sooner and nearer than you think. Come on, it is. And while we've been praising the Lord and doing all this stuff, I, my mind has been racing to a time where I'm going to see my mother and father-in-law and I'm going to be able to dance down the street of glory with them. Yeah, amen. Tasha, I've been dreaming of your dad. 
Don't know him, never met him, but all I was thinking about, man, what a great time whenever the grandkids get to go dance with him on the streets of glory, right. and she gets to dance with him on the streets right. of glory also. And if Keela's nice, we'll let him come along. <laughs> Praise the Lord. The transition from this to what's going to happen is, is mind-blowing, and it's hard to fathom. Because the Bible says that we see through a glass darkly. But at that moment, when we change from mortal to immortality, we shall see like him. We shall understand the things that he understands and will be like him. The Bible tells us as a promise. Everybody here knows the difference between the rapture and the second coming of Christ, right? Everybody, How many of you know that and you know what that is? If you don't know, if you don't, if you don't raise your hand, tell me you know, I'm going to go into it for the next two minutes. Everybody know it? All right. I'm, I'm going to give you this real fast because some of you don't know. And I'm looking at some people here. You may be here for your first, second, or third time. And this is the first time you've really been in what you call a Pentecostal service. And I know what that feels like the first time I went. I, I was about 15 years old and I... Me and my best friend went. And we sat on the church pew there in Centralia, Illinois. And man, I mean, it lit on fire. And I'd never been in a Pentecostal service before. So my mouth, I know, was like this. Watching folks run the aisles. Watching folks praise the Lord. Watching tongues interpretation message. All this stuff going on. People on the floor crying and weeping. Man, I came from, I came from a denominal church. The only thing that was crying and laying on the floor was a person who fell asleep in a pew and they fell out of their seat. That's what the only time that somebody hit the floor. And I love them folks, don't get me wrong, where I grew up, they gave me a great foundation in, in God and it gave me a great foundation in other things. So don't ever discount just because you go or somebody goes to a denominational church, they're not getting something from that. But you said something this morning that got me to thinking about the offering that Cain and Abel gave to us, that gave to the Lord. Where Cain gave the offering of fruit, but in his heart, what he was given was what he thought was the right thing. Abel gave what he thought was the right thing, and the Lord told him, Abel, your offering is I'm going to accept, Cain. I'm sorry. And instead of Cain just going out and getting the right offering, he decided to react a different way. He got offended from God and said, well, I'm going to do whatever I want to do anyway, and that's the way it's going to be. See, that's the world we live in right now. That's why it's some, for some people it feels difficult in sharing with them what God has done for you. That's why it's important that if you don't feel comfortable with a personal testimony, grab one of your cards. You see a student from the college, invite them to church. Because you get them in an atmosphere like this. That's when stuff can happen. Well, hallelujah. Yeah, I'm getting on to you a little bit. It's like I get on to my church too. It's important that we start the process of learning how to move ourselves from this point of being secure in just what we've got and be able to give it out. At least be able to give something to somebody to try to get them to church. We met eight, eight young people from the college the other day. We were at the ice cream place, which is like sin, but it's okay. And I, I asked, I'm going to tell them my grandsons, but I asked J, JJ if he had a card. No. I asked Jackson, who usually has a card with him. No. Judah, I wasn't going to ask. I know he didn't have a card. And he wouldn't know what I was talking about anyway, maybe. But I didn't have one. And usually I'll pick up one here just to have for folks I run into. You say, well, you do that all the time, all the time, as much. My wife will tell you, my daughter will tell you that I don't usually meet a stranger. I try to help somebody, want them to find God, and that's the chief purpose of our being. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, folks, we've got to move ourselves at this time where it feels like when you're so free in here and you walk outside and you feel like somebody puts a boot on your neck, that's not the spirit that God wants Come you on. to have. Come on. The same freedom that you have here, and you can dance yourself out that door. And you don't tell anybody about what you've got. You've failed in what God's given you. Come on now. Well, praise the Lord. Good to be here this morning. Hallelujah. It is. 
Matthew 24, 37. As in the days of Noah, so shall it also the coming of the Son of Man be. Click right on down if you don't mind to 38. To 38. You know the only time you look at the sound people is whenever that something goes wrong. You all do a great job back here. And this here is, this right here, you better never take this for granted. I'm telling you right now, coming from a guy who first started a church in Carlisle, Illinois, and got real good at using CDs. And that is no fun. But I'm telling you, God can move in any avenue, but you better never discount what you got here as far as your talent. And these young people sitting on the pew up here in the front, and wherever else you're scattered, don't discount this blessing that you've got right here. Hallelujah. I remember a lot of you when you were still in diapers. I, I, I just remember when you were babies. And now look at you. Mitchell's driving. Dear Jesus. Yeah. yeah. And all that time that's been passing. We've been, this, this vehicle that we've been on, this train that's bound for glory, this train that's bound for glory, Judah, this train. We've been 16 years now that these kids have grown up in church, and we're drawing ever closer and nearer to the rapture of the church. For as the days of Noah before the flood, they were calling and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day Noah entered the ark. You need to understand what this phraseology means because you think it's just repeating the same word, and it's not. The word marriage means husband and wife. Giving in marriage means homosexual marriage. That's the way it's interpreted in the Bible. Look it up for yourself. I was surprised too, but it's the way it is. What the Lord was telling us, there are things that are going to transpire in our public arena. We've already heard about pestilence and all that stuff. When you heard prophecy, you've heard people preach about pestilence and sickness and stuff. Anybody hear COVID? A worldwide pestilence? Folks, all this stuff, no matter how it transpired, is part of what we're going through as we race towards a thing called the rapture, the catching away of the saints. You won't find rapture in the New Testament, but you will find the catching away of the saints. Okay, we can switch this off if you don't mind. I could have preached that whole chapter right there. Revelation 1 and 3. Revelation 1 and 3. You'll catch that whole, that whole verse of Matthew 24 is nothing but Jesus talking prophetically about what's going to happen, how you're going to recognize the signs. Go back and read it for yourself. It maybe will energize you to know that you've got something that you've got to do. Hallelujah. Revelation 1 and 3, Blessed is he that readeth, and they which hear the words of this prophecy, and keep those things which are written therein, everybody together, for the time is at hand. For the time is at hand. Now, if it was at, if it was at hand 2,000 years ago when this was written, it's at hand even more today. It, it, there is a trumpet sound that's going to happen, and there is a church that's going to be lifted out, whether you're ready or not. There is a time for you to get ready, and now is that time, oh dear Gentile and fa a family member of mine. Don't think that you're going to sit around afterwards, coming, waiting for the second coming of Christ. You're going to endure the tribulation when you can't even surrender to the Lord in this kind of atmosphere. When the atmosphere of the Lord is completely lifted from this world, you're not going to have anything. And I'm going to give you another little hint, Gentile friend of mine. Your time is up. Oh, hallelujah. No matter what you believe or what you think, I'm going to give you the real skinny on this one right now. Your time is right now. The Gentile time is right now. Hallelujah. After that, it's done for you and I. You say, well, Jesus won't love us anymore. The love of God that you feel right now is going to transition to a time of judgment and to a time of tribulation such as the world has never seen, the Bible says. I'm not telling you this to scare you in this great atmosphere. I'm trying to help you and propel you to let you know. Win somebody to God. Win yourself to God, even when you carry hurt, even when you carry heartache. Help somebody. Help yourself. Praise for the time is nearer than you think. 
Now, I understand that for most people that this prophecy is pertaining to the second coming of Christ, but there's much more than that, and I just gave you that short, brief Bible study, I think, where I said the, 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 the rapture of the church and the catching away of the saints is our time. We go up, marriage supper of the Lamb, white uh, uh, judgment seat of Christ, that's where you're going to appear. You do not want to be here for the second coming of Christ because the only people that qualify for redemption at the second coming of Christ are Jewish people. Oh, hallelujah. You say, oh, Brother Mason, I, 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 even if I don't make the rapture, right there is your wrong response. That's the wrong response. You need to look at yourself in the mirror and say, what do I need to do to correct this in my heart where I feel fear over the fact that the rapture is going to take place? Do I think I'm going to make the rapture? Yeah, I do. Not because of the uh, uh, stuff I've done for the church. Not because of the offerings I've gave to the church. Not because of all the worship and praise I did in the church. But because the Bible says that when my spirit is right with God and when that trumpet sounds that I'm going to be changed in the moment of twinkling of an eye and I have a surety because I have repented of my sins I've received the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in other tongues and I've been baptized in the name of Jesus by immersion yeah, I'm getting close to the edge aren't I Elizabeth <laughs> I came off this thing one time that was before the white, white warning strip was up there that, that was not good there are much more that can, when we start talking about the catching away of the saints. Revelation 1 and 1, I'm going to go back to that just for a second. The revelation of Jesus Christ which God gave unto him to show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass. And he sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant John, who bear record of the word of God and that of the testimony Blessed is he that readeth, and they which that hear the words of this prophecy, and keep those things which are written therein, for the time is at hand. John, to the seven churches which are in Asia, grace be unto you, and peace from him which is, which was, and which is to come. And from the seven spirits which are before his throne. Since I'll, you're reading this, you're going like, man, this is like Star Wars or something. You're going like, no, this is, this is, what you're going to have and see whenever you cross the veil from this world to the next. Hallelujah. When the rapture takes place, everybody thinks that you're going to rise in the air to meet him. That I've got a different translation for that. I believe since we have angels among us, I believe we're just going to transition in that moment and we're going to be exactly what he wants us to be. Hallelujah. That moment, that twinkling of an eye, that one sixteenth of a second where it's going to take for your body to change and join the Lord. Hallelujah. I don't know about rising in the air and stuff. I know we sing about it and it sounds great, but I just, I don't care about that. I don't care how I get there. I really don't. It could be in a Volkswagen taxi. I don't care. It could be whatever. Lord, just let me, I want to be there, Lord. And from Jesus, who is a faithful witness and the first begotten of the dead, and the prince of the kings of the earth. Now, you can go for hours on that. Unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood, and hath made us kings and priests unto God and his Father, to him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Behold, he cometh with clouds. Every eye shall see him. They shall also which pierced him, and all kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him. Even so, amen. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending, saith the Lord, which is, which was, which is to come, the Almighty. What time is at hand? Well, if the coming, if the second coming of Christ, that we're all, everybody's going to see him, where the angel's going to step on the mountains, and he's going to say, time shall be no more. If, if all that is, tra is transpiring at the point of being at the end of time, I'm telling you right now, today, we are racing towards a meeting in the air. Hallelujah. Before the second coming of Christ, seven years before that, there's going to be an event that happens, and that's going to be the translation of the church. That's where Thessalonians starts talking about. That in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, there will be a shout of an archangel. The trumpet will sound. 
And the dead in Christ shall rise first, and we which are alive and remain shall be caught up with him in the air. That word remain is very important because it means remaining in the faith. It means remaining in the spirit. It means remaining in the worship. It means remaining in your church. Hallelujah. It means doing the things that are necessary in order to fulfill the great commission so you can feel complete about your Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. I got folks that call me all the time. Pastor, can I do something in the church? Can I, can I do more? Boy, what a dangerous thing to ask for. Because they're expecting, you know, teach Sunday school, maybe something like that. Ask them to do some stuff around the church. That, that's not really what I want them to do. I want them to understand and feel comfortable and know how to approach people without being offensive and not offending them in your Holy Ghost so that they understand that there's something that draws them to you. And when you leave that word with them, there's something that they can't get away from that helps them find the same place that you are right now. Folks, you've got a plethora of people out there that need the Lord. Hallelujah. You've got a church that's breaking its heart, trying to grow, and they're trying to propel you. You say, well, is it our fault? How come Pastor Channel's not witnessing the folks? I got news for you. I've been with him before. He is talking to folks. I've been with Johnny. He's talking to folks. I've been with Elizabeth. We're working on that. And I'm not bragging about the fact about talking, being able to talk to folks about anything, about being able to witness to folks about the Lord or whatever. I, I, I'm not bragging about that. It's just my nature. It's what God has done for me. I was very shy and backward growing up like I am now. What are you laughing about? You sit next to John Wick. And, uh, but God has helped me overcome this shyness, this, this inability to function around people, this ADDism, if you please. I was ADHD before it was ever diagnosed. You, my fourth grade teacher wrote a litany on my fourth grade report card. He does good in school, except, there's the word, except, that he cannot focus. He cannot stay on one task for any length of time. I have to constantly redirect him. Now, this is years ago. She was way ahead of her time. And I got A's and B's, but she kept me back. Because that's what the world does. They see an issue, they hold you back. God sees you and wants to take what you are and mold it to use it for your benefit and his benefit. Every school Sister Mason and I ever worked in, all, some, all, most of our kids were on some sort of medication. Every time, a certain amount of time during the day, they'd take their meds. If they didn't, you could tell. They were off. They were, you could tell the focus wasn't there. Whatever. You say, well, Brother Mason, do they have to have that? Yes, they're supposed to have it. And don't ever just kick, quit taking something the doctor's giving you because you just at that moment feel like, well, that's just what I'm going to do. That's not an act of faith. I'm sorry, it's not. That's an act of not protecting yourself from your own self. Because sometimes it's not you telling you to do that, but there's another spirit that wants to entice you to harm your body, get your mind in a place where it's not supposed to be, and that's because you decide that you're going to be a, your own doctor and your own lawyer and your own Indian chief. And that's where you start running down the path of becoming independent in your thinking. And there's nothing wrong with independent thinking. That's what's encouraged. But there's something wrong when you don't let the, you understand what time you're living in. The college I went to, one of the classes I took was worldview. Can you imagine me in a worldview class? I tried. To, I was nice. I really was. But I, I kept asking questions about this. I said, but, you know, this is, I was going to a religious school. Greenville College is a, was founded by free Methodists, and they're very, if you saw them, you wouldn't be able to tell them dressed from us. They all look, they look like us. They dress like that. Their women don't cut their hair. They don't wear the stuff, and they, they look just like us. But that's where the similarity ends. Because somewhere along the way, John Wesley's teachings got lost in them. John Wesley was a Methodist preacher who had the Holy Ghost. And he was trying to drive them. At one time, our Methodist church was a spiritual church. It was the one where people were running aisles. They were, that's where the term holy roller came from. They were rolling in the floors. They were worshiping God. They were speaking in tongues. Where are they now? Just go ahead and read about some of the stuff that's going on. I will tell you right now, Acts 2 and 18 says, And on my servants, 
<clears throat> Let me go back. Acts 2, 16. But at this time, which was spoken by the prophet Joel, and it shall come to pass in the last day, saith God, I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. And it just hit me right now. I was wrong when I was at the ice cream place. I didn't, I, it wasn't a card that I needed to give them. I should have asked them, would they like for me, me to pray for them? Hello? If they didn't want to, I didn't lose anything by it. If they did, I gained. See, I just now got a revelation from God. It's not about a card. It's about my spirit. It's about my willingness to serve God in this last day. It's about what am I trying to do? Am I trying? I'm going to have to keep living life and doing work and keep on planning like the Lord's not coming back for a thousand years, but I need to live my life like he's coming back tomorrow or today. Hallelujah. That's the old adage. I have a couple favorite authors. One and one of them that I've read, I read his I read this book, try to read it at least once a year. It's by Leonard Ravenhill. Anybody know the author? Why Revival Terry's? Why Revival Terry's? Terry's. I, I, that's one book I have worn out. And, and I realize what, what the reverend's telling me. Prayer, fasting, and being able to look out beyond your own house window and say, can I help somebody else? Can I be with somebody else? Can I help minister to somebody else? And let me tell you something. You see people on the streets. You guys have a plethora of these people on the corners that are holding up signs saying homeless and money and stuff like that. JJ and I ran into one down at the pizza place the other day. And I don't give money to people standing on the street corner that are able to walk around and stay there for hours. I just don't. Not with the way jobs are right now. There's a plethora of jobs you can get by standing around. You can go wait. You can stand at Walmart and be a cashier or what they call a cashier, but it's actually somebody who walks around and wipes the thing down after you're done with checking yourself out. I need to write them and tell them I need to get paid for doing, my, doing their work for me. But I, I gave this guy some money, and I told him, J.G. was there, and I told him, I said, you don't use this for money, or you don't use this for cigarettes, you don't use it for alcohol. Did I say drugs, too? I didn't remember if I said that. I should have said that one first, because that's what he looked like he was really wanting. But I, he promised he wouldn't. Now, you know what? I don't hold promises to folks that don't have the Holy Ghost, because they don't know. They, sometimes they say it in gratitude and whatever, but it's just one of those things when you feel it, you have to do it. Haven't you ever walked by somebody in a grocery store or been by somebody in the movie theater? I'm sorry, I didn't say that. Been by somebody who's trying to catch you. Have you been, to, been around somebody where you knew they were hurting? You knew their life was in turmoil. You knew stuff. But instead of even saying, you might, you would you like for us to pray with you, you just kind of, because you, you're afraid that you're going to hurt their feelings, or you're afraid you're going to make them think that you think less of them. And that's not the case, hallelujah. How much can you not think of people whenever you are looking at them, and you know they need God, and you want to share God with them? Anybody here for the first time, very first time you've ever been in here? Don't be afraid. I'm not coming down to bite you. And I'm going to come down and lay hands on you. No, nope, Everybody's here more than once. All right, that's good. Everybody been, anybody been here? It's been like months since you've been in church, but you came back because you were looking for something. You're not going to raise your hand. I know that. So <laughs> you almost slipped up. It's like an auction. You raise your hand, you buy it. If, you're, if you have been searching and you have went down one path and went down the other path, let me tell you about, let me tell you from the words of somebody that went down a lot of paths and almost ended his life in a path he shouldn't have been on. Can I tell you this? What you're feeling here, receiving the Holy Ghost, being baptized in Jesus' name, repenting, will not end all for you, but it will make a beginning for you. You'll still have your past that you remember. You'll still have stuff you're going to battle. I got stuff I battled from high school. I used to be in high school, by the way, before there was covered wagons and stuff. This used to be an athlete right here, buddy. Now my wife won't even let me swing a softball bat. You, you have to understand, God is trying to give to you his gift. Why is he giving it to you? Because he's hoping, hoping, that you're going to take it and give it to somebody else. Like you ate fruit this morning. What do you think they feed you guys every time that you have class? 
You don't even know the secret, do you? That's how they get your attention. Because when you're eating, they're able to tell you some truths. And I'm giving away your secret, I know. And, they're, and you're able to say, isn't it much more fun and more entertaining to sit there and eat something while they're telling you something? It is, isn't it? We, we should have some, can we have some fruit in here right now? Let's, I'm getting kind of hungry myself. Are you get guys getting kind of hungry? I'm getting kind of hungry. I don't know about you. But God's trying to, and that, that hunger, there has to be something other than natural hunger that drives us into what we do. There has to be a love for people and say, man, I've got the real deal. I've got the real thing. I know, I, folks, I know without a doubt what God has given me is the way, the truth, and the light. Hallelujah. It brings me life. It brings, it's my breath. Hallelujah. Even when I don't feel good. Even when I don't feel good. You saw a lot of people praying for me this morning. That's because about a week ago I did something stupid and I picked up my grandson. Not him. <laughs> I'd be in traction right now. Picked up Judah, carried him off the sand, and in that moment, it cost me four days, four days of going out, seeing the ocean, as I sat down and could not hardly function. You say, Brother Mason, you need a healing. You're telling Brother Mason something he already knows, and he's believing in, and he feels good today. Do I feel pain-free? No, but I feel good. Why? Because I've been in the presence of a body of people that know how to pray. I've been here because the rapture is about to take place. My spirit is yearning to leave this old world. Hallelujah. <clears throat> I'm done. There's an old song that goes, once like a bird, in prison I dwell. <laughs> no freedom from my sorrow I felt. But Jesus but came. Jesus came. Yeah. He didn't tell me what to do. He listened to me. Yeah. Yeah. And glory to, God. glory to God. He set me free. Hallelujah. What did he set me free from? Set me free from my path I was on. Gave me direction where I should go. Touched my life. But I'm going to here to tell you about this Jesus that's telling you right now. The end is nearer than you think. Yeah. He's coming back. He's, coming, he's going to call the church away in a short time. I'm not telling you that to scare you. I'm telling you that to give you the information you need to make a decision based on the Holy Ghost, hallelujah, and the promises of God right now. It's revival time, folks. This is pouring out of the Spirit time right now. This is wonders and works time. This is in time. This is rapture time, hallelujah. This is celebration time. Don't try to set your clock to have a move of God in your life. God's time is His time. His time is near, nearer than you or I can ever imagine. Hallelujah. God's trying to move. He's already moved this morning. I could have I just said, John, keep on singing and not preach. I didn't have to say anything. I told Pastor, he's a hard act to follow. First he hammered it on Sunday morning, and then he decided to go home run derby there before I got up here and just absolutely got all the home runs. Ken Griffey Jr., Babe Ruth, Tom Channel, all of them knocking it out of the park. He said, oh, you'll do all right. I thought, well, maybe. And he's supposed to be better than me. He's your pastor. He's the one that you're listening to. He's the one responsible. I'm not going to answer for you when I come to the white throne. I'm going to answer for a bunch of people in Rockport, which I love y'all. We miss you. And I know you're going to see this online. So we're going to be placing this online also on our website. But I, we love our Rockport church and love our people there. And, and pray for them. Pray for that church. It's the weirdest thing. I'm pastor of the church that my niece's dad started. My niece and her husband are pastor in the church I started. Don't tell me Pentecost is in a small world. But God help them. God help the Carlisle Church. God help all the people that we come in contact with. Lord, have, hallelujah, Jesus. We need you, God, in this time before you're coming right now. Lord, let us know, Lord, not to just not to gather ourselves in like a porcupine, like Fred or Jeff that has that gets scared and he sucks himself in and makes a ball out of himself. No, we need to raise ourselves out. 
Yeah, you're going to get hurt sometimes, and everybody you ask isn't going to come church with you. But if you get one out of ten, man, you're batting great average. You say, Brother Mason, is that what you're telling us to do? I'm not telling you. I'm telling you it's imperative for you to, to help your spirit become in shape for the things to come. The first time that you bring somebody to church and they come up to this altar and they receive the Holy Ghost, it will change your life forever. Sister Mason's mother, my mother-in-law, was one of the most faithful, God-anointed women I'd ever met in my life. I was, I've been privileged to have that in my life along with my mother and my grandmother. But Sister June has been raised, was raised in this. And she, we started the church in Carlisle. And she'd be the first to tell you she got her kids up and took them to church faithfully. And God just blesses her for that and continues to bless that lineage for it. But she started working with a young girl named Sarah. And she asked Sarah to come to church. And we were still in the storefront. We were still in, in Wyman and June's house. We had a little altar built. We had just a, a little place there. And we were running about 45 people. We went from 7 to 45 real fast. Because in an area where there's no light, people are looking for light. So we had Catholic people. We had all these people that came from different places. And you say, did you take anybody from another church? No, didn't have to. Didn't want to. Matter of fact, I got in trouble because I sent some guy packing back to his home church. He got mad at me. His pastor called me and said, hey, I, I, he was there to visit you. I said, yeah, he came to visit. That was great. That's fantastic. He don't come, time not to come back no more. That's not being mean. It's about being respectful of another man's ministry. It's about being respectful of a guy where he's supposed to be, not being drugged to a place where he's not supposed to be. Hello? You don't have to leave church in order to get right with God. You say, well, I've been offended. What's wrong? <laughs> Join the club. I, if I had my wallet, I'd show you my offenses card. It gets stamped every week where somebody steps on you. Somebody says something to you that you don't like. Somebody just mistreats you. And, and somebody makes fun of you for what you believe. They make fun of you for having your hair never cut. They make fun of you for always wearing dresses. They make fun of you for not wearing makeup. They make fun of you for not smoking. They make fun of you for not drinking. They say, why don't you come out with us and we'll show you a good time. My response to them, now speaking from years of advantage, of experience and wisdom, is I'll, you come with me to church and I'll show you an eternal good time. Hallelujah. You don't need the world. Hallelujah. The world is the source from where we get all of our pain, where we get all of our sorrow. But the church is where we get our strength. It's where we get our value system. It's where we get our love. Let's stand this morning. Up here in a the bag, there's prayer cloths. Now, I know they intended them to be for you. But I would like for, if you so desire, to take one of these bags of prayer cloth, you find somebody. I don't care. Maybe one of those names that was on the board. That poor Sal's been up there every time I've been here for five years. Bless his heart. <clears throat> and somebody, somebody, go to that girl in the hospital that you're going to take the prayer shawl to. He said they won't let me in. Wear a mask. Tell them you're the pastor of Calvary Apostolic. You got a business card. Go in there and say, in the name of Jesus. I'll tell you what, better than that, Tammy, we're going to go. Up there, whoever she is, we're going to go. We'll go with you. Is she around the area? You find out. You find out, we're going to go with you, pray with you. And Pastor, I know Sister Pastor will go too. Folks, we need to start reaching out. We need to reach out so that we understand what our role is in all this. Our role is not to come in every Sunday and just worship and jump and shout. Our role is to do what? Answer the Great Commission. And we only have a short time to do it. God's reaching, out, reaching to you so that you can reach out. You are His body. You are His voice. You are his hands, as the song says. It's time. 
It's time to not talk about it anymore. It's time to have action. There is no excuse for not having somebody get the Holy Ghost in every service that we have. Hallelujah. To have Bible studies going on. To have lives changed. I love this church. I, we love your pastor and his wife. We kind of love your sister pastor. And we love all of you. Not because our family's here, but because you have a great church. You have a great church. You have a great pastor and his wife. Well, you all about got docked on your tithe on that one. And you're, and you're blessed to have John and Liz with you. Hallelujah. I know they could have went a lot of places, but they have chosen to be a part of Calvary. And that's what it's all about. You have to choose to be involved, choose to do your work, and choose to get your hands a little dirty sometimes in reaching out to somebody that don't look like you, that doesn't talk like you, that doesn't act like you, that doesn't smell like you. Oh, hallelujah. In Jesus' name right now. If you feel so led, maybe you're here and don't have the Holy Ghost. Maybe you're here and you don't have the Spirit of God living inside of you. Or maybe you have had and you just like for God to reconnect with you. I'm here to ask you, make your way up to the front. Just raise your hands and begin to talk to the Lord. And I will promise you that God will come down and visit with you, yes, hallelujah, in the power of the Holy Ghost. Yes, I guarantee it. You need the Holy Ghost? The Holy Ghost is here. You need to get baptized? The water's here. You need to repent? That's on you. That's between you and God. I can't have you any, any part to that. But that Holy Ghost part, we can help you with if you will allow him right now. In the name of Jesus. Let's pray right now. Go ahead. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Go ahead, Brother Channel. You thought I was worth saving. So you came to change my life. You thought I was worth keeping. So you cleaned me up inside. You thought I was to die for. So you sacrificed your life. So I.
Jesus, Lord.